case you haven't uh, realised, it's been a winter of flooding in parts of Scotland and where there has been floods, there have also been a number of factors that lead to the damage caused. Last July, one factor that many people thought contributed to the flooding in the Perthshire town of Aileth was the presence of beavers in the local rivers. New research from scientists from the University of Stirling, however, suggests the opposite. Well, Dr Alan Law is co-author of the research and he joins us now. What have you discovered then with this latest research? Good morning. Well, there were two parts to the study. The first part was to look at the effect of the, the beaver dams that they create using wood and stones, which is then packed with mud. And so rather than having a river straight through the land, what we have is parts of the river and sections of pond as well. So that has a big implication for the, the plants and animals that live there. And what we, find, what we found was the plants that are in the stream and the plants that are in the pond are very different and that's the same for the animals. So by having both the stream and the ponds and the habitat, what we see is an increase in the number of species we find and their abundance. So by having both of them, we have what we would call an increase in biodiversity within this landscape. The second part of the study was to look at how the water moves through these systems. So in any heavy rainfall event, the rain falls on the land and makes its way into the water and the water level rises to reach a peak level. So we were very interested in how the beaver dams can regulate these peaks and what we found was downstream of these dams the water level doesn't get to the same height as what it does upstream and the time to get to this height is much longer or by several hours so what what really happens is these beaver ponds act like sponges by absorbing a lot of the water and then slowly releasing it as time moves on. So, so preventing, in your view, from causing major flooding then? Within this local landscape, yes, there was a, a delay in flooding and there was a lower uh, water level as well. And, and could that be sort of replicated elsewhere, do you think? I mean, you say within this landscape, does it very much depend on how the landscape is or what the landscape looks like? Well, this is a, a small stream in the upper catchment, and it's not impossible that beavers could build more dams over different parts of the catchment and could slow water at a lower level. The impacts at a greater scale haven't been tested yet in Scotland, and it's something that um, will be looked into. How long does it take for beavers to make these changes on the landscape and, and introduce this biodiversity that you were talking about? Uh, this can be, it's a, it can be a quick process, but also there's such dynamic systems, the biodiversity is constantly changing, they're constant uh, changing environment. So within a year, if a, if a beaver needs to uh, adjust to the environment to suit its needs, it will, within a year you'll see these ponds springing up. And within that year they'll be colonised by all the species within their uh, increasing the biodiversity and also mitigating the floods. And is that always a good thing, introducing more biodiversity? or improving biodiversity, rather? For the most part, yes, because the more species you have in the ecosystem, they all have different functions to play. And if you have more species, so you might have replicates of this function. So if you were to lose a species, for example, there's always another species there that can fulfill that niche. So, for example, breaking down leaf litter, which is a very important process in streams, you can, you're going to have many species that do that rather than just one. Of course, there is suspicion, isn't there, over beavers and their reintroduction. Um, and I, I mean, can you understand that? Because a lot of what might happen and the consequences are unknown. Yes, completely. I think it's uh, it's been a massive step in uh, British wildlife conservation, and I think one of the largest mammals to ever be formally reintroduced into the country. So there's definitely going to be uh, some sort of nervousness associated with that. But at the same time, this was an animal that was here before and has a place now and definitely has more benefits than negatives. Dr Alan Law from the University of Stirling.